Good afternoon, Bakers. This is Thought Leadership Thursday. In these sessions, we will dig into thought leadership that is worth taking notice, especially in the baking industry. So um, what is thought leadership, right? So thought leadership um, is hopefully, uh, the thought leadership skills I would like to share would hopefully change the way you work help you supply chain and help you growth hack, you know, try to give you that ramp up in your growth curve. Okay. So today our first thought leadership Thursday for our first session, we have Tyler Lorenzen, the CEO at Puris. Puris is a rapidly growing plant-based food ingredient company and Tyler is leading a team focused fanatically on a system of non-GMO and organic seeds and plant proteins by working with an end-to-end -end network of growers, um, makers, and consumers of plant-powered nutrition. They are shaping the way we enjoy food in the years to come through the creation of plant-based foods. Um, they created new ways of manufacturing and regenerative and sustainable practices for growers across the United States. Welcome, Tyler. Thank you, Dr. Lynn, for having me. Excited to be here. Tyler, could you please tell our audience what are Purist fundamental products? What do you sell? So Purist is a, a yeah, we're a plant-based food company. So when when you said in the intro, we're you know fanatically going after this. It's a purpose of our product for us. So we uh, started a long time ago before this whole plant-based terminology was coined around uh, foods made from plants, just happened to be from plants. So we focus on designing and creating the foods that you love, but containing ingredients that are derived from non-GMO and organic plants. And my dad started the company back in 1985 and wow. he was a plant breeder. So not only do we sell ingredients and manufacture food, but we also develop seeds that are non-GMO and grown organically all across the United States. And those farmers then sell us the, the crop back. And then that's when we make it into some great tasting food. And it's been an interesting business. Certainly the last few years have been uh, rapid growth due to the change of climate on how people are consuming food. And, and really, I think today in this situation that the world is going through, it highlights the need for transparency on where your food comes from, the journey it traveled, the security mm -hmm. of the food, ensuring yep. people have it, and the efficiencies of that food system. So not only does it have to be there to be consumed, it has to taste great, and has to be super safe. And so that's that's what Purist is all about. Our, our whole uh, mission is to do it through plants, and uh, peas being our, our favorite, uh, favorite crop, and that's a, a pulse, as you may know, and then a variety of other plant proteins as well. And, and the corresponding ingredients that come with it. So starches, fibers, and so on. Oh, okay, interesting. How can bakers use this product in the latest food trend? Yeah, I think when you look at bakers, there's certainly the same needs that are happening in sports nutrition or in, in meats is happening in baked goods as well. So whether it be you know, picky food eaters that are looking for a certain type of food, or it's food eaters that are attached to food and are consuming it from an ethical perspective, meaning animal welfare or, or such. So we go after those niches. And today in age, they've stacked up so many. There's so many different reasons why people are choosing foods that are made from plants that bakers, too, have an ability to deliver those kind of products to them as well. So if it's not GMO, if it's organic, you know, whatever, those are the things that we're able to do. And so we, we add protein to waffles so you, you talk about what's vegan what's plant-based yeah. how do you remove the egg so you can vegan, build right yeah, exactly mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so those are the things that we're doing and, and i think the formulations are are the fun part because you see the ingredients come to life and you know imagine eating a 12 gram protein pancake that has absolutely no animal products in it but tastes like the pancakes that you grew up loving so that's really the mission that we're on and you know what we're doing with our ingredients great so i have some samples here from you that your team sent over um pea starch and pea fiber what do i do with these what what can bakers do with this 
I think the the world talks about plant based proteins, but plants they do have protein, but there's a lot more things they have in there as well beyond protein. There's there's more things. There's starches. There's fibers. There's oils. And so with Pyrus, what we do is we take a pea, which is a pulse. The pulses are dry seed legumes, so protein, starch, and fiber primarily. And we, we make the protein as an ingredient and use in all sorts of different categories, including baked goods. But those co-products are products to us. So starch and fiber, those we are the We got to figure back, out what to do with them. <laughs> not, not only fig, figure out, but it makes it so interesting. I think fiber claims have been such a big thing going mm -hmm for years around how do we formulate products with high fiber that still tastes good. And then also you look at not corn starch. So starch that's not from corn. And that's a lot of features and benefits like, you know, non-GMO or organic, but also it's it's right here and domestically made. So we, we, we look at our pea starch as a, a nice option versus tapioca starch as an example. And you can really create anything that you imagine. So the, the functionality as a starch, the nuance is subtly different. But in the baking world, it shows up very similar to the starches that you like, and it's super clean. So you're able to formulate as you see fit, whether that be eggless or include egg. So, so when you say super clean, what exactly does that mean? So clean tasting for sure. Okay, I think that, that's where everything starts is the food has to taste good. But yeah. then also, is it clean label? And we look at it as it, are the ingredients, you know, cooks and have people at home re relate to the ingredients that are in the food. And so that's when pea starch, it's, it's similar to every other starch. But the nice thing is when you start peeling back the onion, what, where do those peas, they come from U.S. farmers. What are those, pea, why are those peas even grown? Well, they're grown to drive soil health and as a rotational crop. And what is the journey, where is it manufactured? Well, it's manufactured all in the United States. And what, what are the possibilities? literally anything you can imagine and baked goods are my favorite because you know i have i just i just love waffles i love all of those things and so we build those foods from them ingredients and so with pink with things like pea fiber pea starch pea protein what percentages can bakers use this at in, mm -hmm. in terms of protein levels and egg replacement yeah i think the the egg replacements uh is a great point. Yeah. 20 years ago, I bet people weren't talking so much about, you know, baked goods without eggs in them or without milk. And so this, the need case is here today. And so bakers have to find a solution. But I think the other thing is, is how do we make baked goods that are nutritionally dense that are not just tasty, but also can be a uh, health forward. So when we think about adding protein to products, we design proteins to whether it's gluten-free or if there's gluten in it, different protein for that baked application. So take a, a, a waffle is easy for me to, as an example. So if you, if it has gluten or wheat in it, mm -hmm. uh, we have a protein that allows you to augment the protein that's already in, in the wheat. So you're able to get the protein content, you, you like 12 to 15 grams probably nice. on a regular Belgian waffle. And now nice. how do you do the same thing? In, in, gluten free and waffle protein that has more functionality like wheat would typically. So you get the expansion, the structure, and then nutritionally, you still have the protein per serving that, that we meet. So those are actually different proteins that we've built through our, our manufacturing process that allows the functionality to show up different in application. That's great. Have you run any um, studies with other baked products other than waffles? Yeah. So with like cookies and you know, breads, really, you name it, crack, like all of the baked goods. Um, and you, and you just still had, don't get that pea-based pulse flavor in those things? I'm just Absolutely wondering. not. No, okay. that, that is really our, our, our unique ability as purists is we, we, peas may be not known to taste good as peas, and maybe some people like peas, but most people do not. So what we've been able to do and how we've shown, we're able to grow our business is really creating those ingredients that are neutral in flavor. So they don't taste like anything is the goal. And so you mm -hmm. can add them to your favorite foods and then your favorite fruit foods taste like they always have. So that's what we do with the protein. And so you name uh, croissants, uh, really all of the different baked goods, we've uh, had applications for those.
Great. So you claim that um, your pea protein tastes good. So how do you make your pea protein taste good? Yep. So our, <laughs> our pea, yeah, that's a good question. So there's really two things that we do that are pretty different than the rest of the market. One is we're a seed company at first and great taste starts in the field. It starts with the seed. So we, we actually breed seeds that have unique attributes that can deliver a better flavor product in the end. So it's a end to end system. It's all combined. But then once we get it to the manufacturing process, we have a, it's a pea protein process that uses water and it's a proprietary process for purists where we, uh, take the protein out of the peas and separate the starch, the protein, and the fiber. And in the end, we're able to neutralize off notes through a process of deflavoring uh, that is uh, that is unique to us. And then, then at the end, we take the water out, recover all of the water, reuse all of the co-products for different things. And ultimately, that gives you a clean tasting or a neutral tasting uh, ingredient. Interesting. So let's get back to the pea and how it's grown. Why are mm -hmm. peas so sustainable? And how does it work for your farmers? Yeah, so mo most crops, uh, cash crops like corn, wheat, hemp, uh, oats, as an example, all require an abundance of nitrogen so they can grow. Well, mm -hmm. certain crops like soybeans, peas, and other pulses and legumes actually fix nitrogen. So nitrogen is a fertilizer that is put on crops for them to grow. So if you take corn, for example, there's about 90 million acres of corn grown in the United States each year. And mm -hmm. for every bushel of yield, there's about a pound of nitrogen that's applied. So typically this is, you know, chemical nitrogen fertilizer. If you are from the Midwest, you've seen it. And that nitrogen is added to the soil to get the yield that you want. Well, corn yields about 175 bushels an acre. You could do the math quick. That's a lot of nitrogen, billions and billions of pounds of nitrogen. Well, peas add 70 pounds of nitrogen per acre through fixating it. So they wow. actually produce more nitrogen than they, than they need. And so what farmers do, especially in the North, they grow peas on rotation. So they plant peas on off years, then they plant their cash crop. Maybe that's wheat, maybe that's oats, maybe it's corn, a variety of things. And then the next year they plant their the corn. Well, what we've been able to do, and my dad being a plant breeder, he had the foresight to say, hey, someday people will want to grow more organic crops. They'll want to grow more regeneratively. They'll have to grow with, with this idea of feeding people in mind, and we need a more efficient system. So we started breeding peas that grow in the north further south. Nice. And this allows you to adapt the pea to a different environment and allow you to grow peas at a different time of the year, which can you imagine growing peas ahead of different crops so you can add even more nitrogen as a double crop system. So what we're doing now is growing peas at off cycle uh, times of the year and more warmer clients, climates, excuse me, but it's still cool at that time. And then buying what they go, grow, grow back. And I think that's the key point is uh, cover crops, rotational crops, regenerative farming, carbon fi farming, so to speak, mm -hmm. is great. It's super important as we go All after right. the soil health in the United States. But the challenge is there's not a lot of buyers of those crops. There's right. not a lot of markets. I was just going to say that. Who's going to buy all that pea protein? So that, starch? that is why we had had to create the ingredient. But, and yeah, create you have the to need. create the market and you have to really lead with innovation, you know, mm -hmm. and that's where I see it. This is like the most difficult thing, right? I mean, you're producing something that nobody has any idea how to use but then nobody has any idea why you're producing in the first place. You know, mm -hmm. you have this great sustainability story behind it. And if you can get enough people to support that, I mean, that's, that's really a really good story to tell, you know? But, and it's not even a story, it's, it's all real. It's happening. Yeah. But back, you know, we started breeding peas over 20 years ago. And when we first started, yeah, it was weird. It was odd. Why would you grow peas in Kansas? But now today, <laughs> you fast forward, and we, we work with 400 farmers over 14 different states, as far west as Montana, as far south as Georgia. I was and just going to ask that. So where are the peas grown exactly? All, so e everywhere in between. So Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, so Kansas, Missouri. corn and wheat? 
or but not necessarily if we, we can grow peas in a lot of different places we we grow them all over the world but we are focused on creating uh, very efficient crop systems for right. midwest row crop farmers so if we could add a third crop into the rotation that's a lot better than two that they may currently have and if we can add provide the offtake so we buy what they grow back that's even better so we're growing peas all across the Midwest and, you know, 400 farmers and growing. Uh, we're building a second production plant in Minnesota, which our current facility is one of the largest in the world. And our, our new plant will, will certainly be the biggest. And we were one of the first to start uh, pea protein, and especially here in North America. Before it was cool. It was odd. We got a lot of laughs. And now today it's there's actually a market. People want the products. And it's exciting because I think the the, the food is is what drives the demand, but farmers need a solution to drive soil health and they, they can't just be asked to do it and without a market. You have to provide the economics that make the system work and that's why I'm so excited about what's possible with this market. Yeah, that's amazing. And now with, you know, um, all the exciting innovation and um, plant-based you know, uh, incredible meads or whatever you call them, you know, uh, extenders, meat extenders, you know, mm -hmm. that's really, it's really a great application for it. So um, there are a few um, P supply chain uh, suppliers in this world. Mm -hmm. What do you think makes Purist different from the rest of them? Yeah, if you look at getting back to where everything comes from, if you look at where peas are grown, there's a big hub of peas grown in North America. And then there's some in Europe and some in India, some in China, but not, not, not widely grown. But the, the processors are, are certainly not where the majority of peas are. So when we look at what makes Purist unique, one, I think the taste and flavor is, is so important. The functionality, all the attributes that drive good ingredients is important. Uh, where it's from, grown and made from an end-to-end -end system, knowing exactly the farmer and exactly mm -hmm. the route it traveled and never leaving us a, a, a supply chain that's uncertain is also really important. But really what I think makes Purist super cool and what means the most to me is we're, we're a pure play. This isn't something we jumped into because the market was hot. We've been doing this for 35 years and it's always been about how do we provide plant-based nutrition to a growing world. And food security, traceability, transparency, and great taste is part of food. And we think that's what eaters deserve. And we're trying to build systems that make that happen. And to me, that's what makes us different than, you know, whether it's a trader or a manufacturer that's, you know, jumping in because it's, it's hot. I think for us, this is, we're committed to this long term. Yeah, that, that sounds great. And um, now that we have a better idea of what your products are, uh, if a baker wants to bake with them, how can they obtain them? Yeah, so we have a whole product development team. I, Dr. Lynn, you have to come to Minneapolis and, and meet the team. With their, when this when Christmas say, is over. <laughs> I know, right? They, when I say fanatical, they are extremely fanatical. But we, we, so we develop a bunch of products and that's the fun part of our job. So if you want samples or we can work on applications, we even develop products for people mm -hmm. and that, that's exciting. But we have a group sales uh, team across the United States and of course the available for video conference, available for phone calls, or go to purestfoods.com and ask for a sample request, and, and we're happy to, to supply. And I think uh, we'll, we'll send you a fun uh, sample box sometime. I, I see you have the samples on your desk, so you, you yeah. already know. Yes, I've already looked at it and checked it out. It's pretty clean. That's right. <laughs> pretty, Thank you. It, it's odor-free, so it's good. It's good. <laughs> I am confirming it's odor-free. <laughs> <laughs> So um, really, I, 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 I want to thank you for coming on today. Uh, before we leave, is there anything you would like to share about being a thought, thought leader in this particular field? And how, what, are the, what are the things that you do in your company that you really feel passionate about? If you could share those thoughts. I think today is a right now you know we're virtually meeting i had virtual meetings all day long because we're not supposed to go into the office and social distancing and this pandemic that's happening it it's uh thought leadership's one thing but leadership is 
the most important thing probably and actually doing doing as you preach and practicing and living into the values of the business and those actions matching the values. I think what makes me so proud of being with Purist is I watched the adaptability of our company go from, hey, we're all together as one all of the time to then going virtual and staying with the, the energy because in the end, people need food. And it's up to our industry, bakers, plant-based, animal-based, whatever base, it's, it's our jobs to create food for folks that need to eat. And mm -hmm. no matter what happens, we're going to have to deliver and it's it's on us to figure it out. So what I'm excited about is save people and save food and, and making decisions through, you know, value-based decisions that can steer us through these challenging times. In the end, we'll come out uh, better than we, we began. And I, I know that and it'll be, a, it'll be tough, but we'll be better for it. Well, that's right. You know, saying and doing is really, really different when it comes to um, leadership skills, right? So you mm -hmm. got that one right. And um, I wish you all the best in your team. Um, keep producing the food supply that we all so need during these tough times. <laughs> and um, thank you so much for coming on today's show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.